Hello, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Esports and Gaming, the show where we talk about the latest and greatest in business happenings for gaming, esports, and creator news. I'm your host, Mark Kai. We're here for the third week of October 2024, and let's dive right into it. For our first top three story, MLB and League of Legends esports series have surpassed 1 billion hours watched. Moonton's Mobile Legends Bang Bang Professional League, or MPL, was the first esports series to clock in over 1 billion hours watched in its history. According to IR Flip Dempsey of Esports Charts, this league has surpassed the uh, Worlds that we just will mention later and many other esports series in terms of hours watched, albeit Worlds was only uh, very close behind it and actually did accomplish this just a few days afterwards. Indonesia and the Philippines have emerged as key markets for viewership in MLB. MLBB Esports, which has significantly boosted viewership to the series, and Esports Charts contextualizes MLBB's achievements in the mobile gaming industry to quadruple the viewership of the PUBG Mobile Pro League as well, which has about the same amount of airtime. On the other side of things, the League of Legends World Championship Series also just surpassed 1 billion hours watched, now being the second event series and for esports to accomplish that achievement. The World Championship Series, though, in comparison, has one eighth the amount of events and only compares to about 12% of the total broadcasting time compared to the MPL. So, as we can tell, this means Worlds does not happen very often, uh, but when it does, it's viewed by so many people. And Worlds is the first PC and or console title uh, esports event series to reach 1 billion hours watched as well, and many other Riot Games esports properties are close behind with the lck at over 960 million and vct at over 860 million hours watched something else to note is that peak viewership of the korean audience from last year's worlds was higher than all peak viewership in 2016 of worlds combined so it's good to see for both moonton and riot games as it shows sponsors and executives that intention and dedication that fans hold for these titles hoping to see these records continue uh, and achievements like this for other esports series as well for our second top three story, Bungie and NetEase have announced Destiny Rising. This is the newest free-to-play mobile shooter that goes into closed alpha test near in the near future. Scheduled to begin in uh, November of this year, the game will be launched in the US and Canada only with randomly selected pre-registrants getting access. The game will be released on both Android and iOS with publishing and development being done by NetEase with Bungie providing the license to the sci-fi IP. Set in an alternate timeline, the game will explore narrative in the post-Dark Age era with both PvE co-op and PvP competitive modes being integrated. The trailer on both IGN and Destiny Rising channels have garnered over 400,000 views thus far and have somewhat mixed reactions in the comments, most commenting on how the gameplay looks too good to be true for mobile. It'll be interesting to see how this performs and what the mobile community thinks of this game. For our final top three story, ESL Facebook Group are going to invest $22 million towards Counter-Strike Esports. This will take place over the course of 2025 and 2026 and will be in alignment with Valve's updated operational guidelines for Counter-Strike Esports. The $22 million allocation will be in addition to the hospitality allocation for each event, which already includes accommodation, flights, practice setups, and on-site hospitality. EFG's 2025 calendar will see a variety of events, including IEM Katowice, ESL Pro League Season 22 and 21, IEM Spring, IEM Dallas, I am Cologne and I am Chengdu, some of which are deemed ESO Pro Tour EPT Masters competitions. Ticket sales for I am Katowice and I am Cologne will go live later in October of this year, and additional details around the events in the overall 2025 and 2026 calendar will be released at a different time. I'm excited to see the uh, flurry of investments into Counter Strike Esports from PGL to EFG to others as well. As far as partnerships go, Samsung partners with Giant X and Xset. The Giant X partnership will see Samsung make appearances at the EGX Comic Con booth with a joint themed approach. The booth will feature a range of Samsung products, including its mobile devices and TVs, with a Samsung gaming hub built in. The Xset partnership will see Samsung uh, uh, have Samsung Galaxy collaborate with the Oregon Initiatives, empowering women in the industry. This will focus on New York Comic Con with Xset's female content roster attending the event and hosting a meet and greet for attendees. Abios and the Swedish state-owned gambling company Svenska Spell have partnered up. Abios will provide Svenska Spell with its comprehensive range of odds, streams, and widgets for eSoccer, which covers over 12,000 matches each month from Abios. Abios aims to expand its offering to the Swedish market through this deal. Stake have partnered up with Grid. Stake will be the exclusive betting partner of the Champion of Champions Tour, or CCT. They will provide content and uh, activations as well, collaborating throughout the event. Ents partnered with the Swedish apparel brand Bjorn Borg. Ents will launch a new pro kit as well as a line of sportswear for Ents players in collaboration with Bjorn Borg, and merch drops will be sold through Ents' channels, and this marks Bjorn Borg's first push into esports. Talon partners with Confiction Labs. The two parties will work together on optimizing the co-op shooter title Riftstorm in addition to creating a content series that highlights various features in the game. Talon players will provide feedback to the developers and will be sharing their favorite builds and in-game strats. 
Riot Games partners with LVMH. This collaboration will see Fenty Beauty create beauty products based on the Arcane film series. Also to note, Fenty Beauty designed each character's makeup looks seen throughout season two. And as such, this will see participation from Rihanna, who's the CEO of Fenty Beauty. Blast partners with Opera. Opera is no stranger to esports, so this is the first time it's sponsoring CS2 ecosystem. Opera GX will be named the official web browser partner of the competition, with the brand aiming to be prominently featured throughout the Blast Premier World Final. Opera will also be offering $50,000 of skin giveaways for CS2 fans. As far as finance and M&A goes, UMX Studio have secured a $4.5 million investment. The investment came from Jetapult in the form of an all-cash transaction, and UMX will also receive support to expand its portfolio and audience to reach a new target base. Guild Esports have been acquired by DCB Sports for 100,000 British pounds. 100% of Guild Esports assets were acquired in exchange for assuming all disclosed liabilities of the company, which end in excess of 2 million British pounds. The company's name will also be changed to Castle Capital PLC to avoid confusion with Guild Esports and Gaming LTD. Azure Games raised a $42.7 million Series A. The round was led by Pantera Capital with participation from A16Z Games, A16Z Crypto, and NFX. They will use this funding to develop its debut game called Project Legends, which targets a Western audience with a gritty, mature approach tied to 70s fantasy. Keyword Studios have acquired Certain Affinity. While financial details were left undisclosed, Certain Affinity will continue to be led by its management team of CEO Max Haberman and President Paul Sams. This acquisition will see both upfront cash purchase as well as an earnout component based on Certain Affinity's performance. As far as workforce changes go, Peyton Caffel joins the NFL as a manager for video games. Peyton has, will be focusing on consumer products, primarily gaming partnerships with EA Sports, Ubisoft, and other game companies. He spent two years at Sport 5, most recently doing gaming and talent partnerships, and also spent time at CSM Sport and Entertainment from 2021 to 2022 as well. He holds a bachelor's in sport administration from University of Miami. Craig Duncan has been appointed the head of Xbox Game Studios at Microsoft. Craig has a storied background in the gaming space and will take over Xbox Game Studios after Alan Hartman's retirement. Craig was the studio head of Rare Games for the past 14 years and before that did product development and led studios at Midway Games, Codemasters, Sumo Digital, and many others. Safe to say, Craig has a lot of experience launching and making games. Congrats on uh, Craig on this appointment. Christopher Pankhurst joins Giant X as a senior partnerships manager. Christopher was with HyperX and HP since 2019, doing influencer marketing for the EMEA region. He was also focused on gaming talent and partnerships in his most recent role for the past year. He himself has done lots of content as a partner Twitch streamer and also did work for Machinima ESL Bluehole in the past with esports commentary. He holds a certificate of higher education in computing from Teesside University. Charlotte Bavister has been promoted to Associate Director for Strategic Partnerships and Marketing at 505 Games. Charlotte has been with 505 Games for nearly six years now, most recently serving as the Senior Partnerships and Marketing Manager for First Party Titles. Before 505 Games, she did a variety of roles with Sikama LTD, as well as El Mexicana and Radio Society of Great Britain. She holds a diploma from Bedford College. As far as new stuff goes, Super Gaming have revealed an esports roadmap to Indus Battle Royale. For reference, Indus launched on October 16th and has received over, over 1 million downloads across iOS and Android. The esports roadmap will be called Clutch India Movement and will feature official and third party events with various prize pools to be featured for players. That's it for this week in esports and gaming. Thank you so much for tuning in. Credit to the authors and brands themselves for the images and information provided. If you want to show some support to Invest Game as well as the esports advocate, the links will be in the comments. And if you want to show some support to me, either tag someone who would find this valuable or share this with your audience. And then, as always, everybody, have a great day.